Hello everyone, welcome to the first live stream I've done in months. Um, possibly the second I've done in lockdown. How are you? Please feel free to say hello in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from and how you're feeling. Um, I'm just going to wait for a few more people to come in before I start today's lesson. Hmm. So today we're going to be talking about conditionals. Now conditionals are tricky at the best of times and I think yesterday I made things a little bit more confusing because while I was trying to do things en masse, I was trying to batch, schedule, edit, get everything ready for a bunch of videos, I mislabeled the video that I put out yesterday as a second conditional lesson when it wasn't a second conditional lesson at all. So very sorry if I confused you yesterday with that lesson. But that prompted me to think today, why don't I just come on and talk to you about the four conditional states, the zero conditional, um, first conditional, second conditional, and third conditional. <laughs> and just kind of get, get to the bottom of these conditionals and the differences between them so that we all feel more confident with the differences. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do, because I'm streaming here from my phone, I'm going to try and get this stream up on my laptop below my mobile and see if I can then type into the chat box here. Ah, okay, I can see the chat, fantastic. If I can just get that to a point where I can actually see your comments. Hi, okay, so lots of you joining me, fantastic. Hello, everyone, and let me just make sure I can type in here. Hi guys. Fabulous. Okay, so what time is it? Two minutes past one. Uh, hi Anna, nice of you to join me. Um, members, those of you who are a member of my English club or a patron, I also have the Skype room open as well. So feel free to um, chat to me in the Skype room so that I don't miss your messages if you have anything you want to add to today's session. Okay, all right. I can't stay too long today because Jacob is asleep at the moment and he won't be asleep for long. So I have to make the most of this time. So shall we get started? Right. Conditionals. With conditionals, we're going to use the word if. So you have the if clause and then you have the main clause. Now, there are two ways to write a conditional sentence. You can start with the if clause um, or you can start with the main clause and have the if clause follow it. Um, both ways are absolutely fine to use. It's just if you start with the if clause, it's really important to use a comma at the end of the if clause before you then put your main clause. OK, so let's start with the zero conditional. So the zero conditional, let me write this in, zero conditional. So the zero conditional, basically, let's think of this as the present real continuous. So we're talking about something that's absolutely real and we're talking in the present. OK, so present real conditional. So this is called the zero conditional. Now, um, we are only going to use this when something is 100% guaranteed going to happen. So um, it's a factual based conditional. So it's factual present or potential future circumstance. Um, we're only going to use this for something like universal truths or for giving commands. Um, this is always in the present tense. So you're going to use if plus um, the present tense, and then in the main clause, you're going to use the present tense again. Okay, so let me just paste this over to you in the chat box there. Hello, those of you just joining me, we're talking about the zero conditional tense initially. Um, um, and thank you, Rebois, for your very kind little super chat there. That's really nice of you, very much appreciated. Um, some of you are joining me here for the first time, welcome. Fantastic to have you here. So, so let's use this, um, this 
what is the word this um, format <laughs> let's use this format and do some examples um, if you are hungry so if you are hungry present tense eat so if you are hungry is the if clause and eat is the main clause if you are hungry eat now this is a command remember you can use the zero conditional with commands or universal truths if you are hungry comma eat okay the other thing with zero conditionals is that you can always replace if with when and it won't change the meaning so you can say when you are hungry eat okay when you are hungry eat it doesn't change anything um, another example if my baby gets hungry he cries if my baby gets hungry, he cries. If my baby gets hungry, he cries. Here, here are some others. When we work together, we succeed. Now, we could switch these around. We succeed when we work together. We succeed when we work together. Remember, if we do turn it around and have the main clause first, we don't need a comma. Okay? All right. So, um, Zoryana has said, what about if the weather is hot, we'll go to the beach? If the weather is hot, we'll go to the beach. Now, this isn't zero conditional. This is first conditional because it's not absolutely guaranteed. And the way that we know it's first conditional and not zero conditional is because you've used the word will. You've used the future tense. We will go to the beach. Even though it's quite certain that 99% sure if, the, if it's hot, you're going to go to the beach. It's not 100% guaranteed. Um, so when you're using will, it stops being zero conditional. OK. Let me have a look for some more, more examples here. Um, oh, sorry, the comments are moving so fast. If I am hungry, I go to the restaurant, says Sandra. Good. Perfect. If you read my line, say hello to me, please. <laughs> hello. Good sentence. When I spend all day watching video, I feel sick. I spend all day watching video. Yeah, I feel sick. Um, can we use go outside or beach? I'm not sure what you're referring to there. Sorry. Um, lots of people asking how I am. I'm okay. I'm quite, I'm quite round at the moment. Shall I show you? I've got my big baby bump going on. So I'm feeling, feeling quite crushed, to be honest. <laughs> um, a few more months and baby will be with us, which is quite exciting. Okay, so zero conditional. If we didn't study, we will not succeed. Is it a zero conditional? If we didn't, so if we didn't is not present tense. Um, uh, oh, hang on. If we didn't study, if we didn't study, we will not succeed. No, that's not zero conditional. If we don't study, if we don't study, we won't succeed. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's not quite zero conditional. Let me give you some more examples to help out here. So here we go. I'm going to paste some more into the comments here. If, if I see you here again, you are in trouble. It's dead certain. I haven't used the word will. We haven't used any future tense here. If, you, if I see you here again, you are in trouble. Okay. Um, here's another one. If it rains, the pavement gets wet. That's certain. That's certain. If it rains, the pavement gets wet. So anything that's factual, anything that happens every time. Now, another thing to remember with zero conditional is it's usually a general thing. It's not usually about specific events. It's usually in general. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading some of your comments here. Um, when the temperature drops below zero degrees, it snows. 
If you are pregnant, you're happy, says Giovanni. Yes, good one. That's good. Um, and I'll give you another one here. This is, um, this is a specific thing, but it's very general for me. If this was me that had a salmon allergy, I would say, if I eat salmon, I have an allergic reaction. And that would mean that every time I eat salmon, I will have an allergic reaction. Okay, it doesn't mean that everybody does. It just means that it's specific to me, but it's a general outcome of that thing happening. Okay, so you use the, the zero conditional when it's something that's absolutely guaranteed to happen every single time. And it's usually quite a general thing. And we don't use will. Okay, so moving on to the first conditional. So the first conditional can talk about the present or future real situations, but it's not always absolutely guaranteed. It's very probable, it's highly likely to happen, but it's not guaranteed. And it's also used in very specific situations, okay? So it might be just a one-off time that something happens. It doesn't happen every time, like the going to the beach scenario I'm talking about today. If it's hot and sunny today, I will go to the beach, okay? It doesn't mean that every time it's hot and sunny, I go to the beach. Sometimes I have to work. Sometimes um, I'm, I don't have a car to go to the beach, you know? So um, this is for specific situations and it's something that's very likely to happen, but not certain to happen, okay? So let me um, talk about this a little bit more. So it's used to talk about future events which are highly likely ha to happen but not 100% certain. It can be used to make promises. So if your intention is to do something. So if you, if you look after my toddler today, I will return the favour. I will return the favour. So I intend to. It probably will happen. But it's not guaranteed. If you lend me £10, I will pay you back. So that's probably going to happen. I'm a trustworthy person, but it's not guaranteed. OK, um, so it can be used to make promises. It can be used as a warning. Um, let me think of a warning. Um, if you if you eat too many sweets, you will feel sick. It's not guaranteed to make you feel sick, but it probably will make you feel sick. So if you eat too many sweets, you probably you will probably feel sick. Now, we do often contract you and will or I will, he will, she will. We'll usually contract it down to I'll, you'll, she'll, he'll, we'll. OK, I know some of you struggle with those pronunciations. Um, so let me just go through those again. I will. Aisle, aisle, like walking down an aisle in a supermarket, aisle. You will becomes you'll, you'll, you'll. Um, we will becomes wheel, like the wheel on a car, wheel. Uh, she will becomes she'll, she'll. Almost like you're going to say shield with a D on the end. Shield yourself. She'll, she'll. Um, he will becomes heel, heel, like the heel of your hand or the heel on your foot, heel. Okay, they will becomes they'll, they'll, they'll. Okay, I hope that helps. So um, it can be used as a warning. The first conditional can also be used when speaking about probable future events. So if my favourite singer announces a world tour, I'll go and see him. So I will go and see him. I'll go and see him if he announces a world tour. And that's something potentially in the future. And it's very likely to happen. But it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. By the time my favourite singer announces a world tour, I might not like that singer anymore. I might have moved on and changed my opinion. So uh, Mohammed has written, if you want to be 
safe with COVID-19, stay home. So you're not using will there. We're not using future tense. So you could say that's a, that's a command. And so that's zero conditional. Okay. Um, if you study hard, you will get a good job position. You can say you get a good job. You don't need to add job position. And careful how you've spelled position. You've written it as poison. Um, but yes, Sandra, if you study hard, if I study hard, sorry, I will get a good job. Yes, that's first conditional. Well done. Um, if I study hurdly, hurdly, uh, Giovanni, I think you've made a typo there. I'm not quite sure. Maybe you're trying to say harder. I'll pass the exam. So yeah, that's a good example. If I study harder, I will pass the exam. So it's very likely that if you study harder, you will pass the exam. It's not guaranteed because you might still have a bad day when you take the exam. You might have a complete just mind meltdown. You might completely forget everything and just stress gets in the way. Um, you might have studied the wrong things. So studying harder usually results in, in a good um, exam result, but it's not guaranteed. OK. Um, Anna Rita says, if you study, if you leave now, you'll arrive on time. Where's that gone? Um, if you leave now, you'll arrive on time. Yes, perfect. If you leave now, you will probably arrive on time. Not certain, but probably. OK, I think you've all got the hang of this one now. Um, so just to say that with this particular one, the first conditional, the if clause is in the present simple tense and the result is in the future. We use will. OK, will. Um, yeah, and I'll just give you the format here. Post that in. OK, lovely. Good morning, those of you who just joined me. Hi. So we've talked about the first conditional, but let's write down some examples here just to finish this section off. If you get the job or if I get the job, rather, I will celebrate. If I get the job, I will celebrate. If I get home early, I'll cook. If I get home early, I will cook. Probably. Unless I get home and find that the fridge has been left open and everything's gone off. And then I'll just be like, let's get a takeaway. If you don't leave soon, you'll miss your flight. That's similar to what Anna Rita wrote. If you don't leave soon, you'll miss your flight. You will miss your flight. And the last example I've got written down here is if you tell her your secret, she won't keep it. She won't keep it. OK, so then I've used the negative form. She, she won't keep it. OK, lovely. Um, uh, Alina said, if I practice regularly, I shall be fluent. Yeah, good. You can use shall as well instead of will. I shall. I shall be fluent. If I don't take medication, um, you will not. If you don't take medication, you will not become well soon. I probably use the word recover. You'll not recover quickly, I might say. Um, uh, if you don't take your medication, if you don't take your medication, you'll not recover quickly. OK, or you'll not recover. Uh, if we don't visit her, she will get angry, said Sarah. Perfect. Really nice. Now, don't forget that we can switch this order around. So we can do the main clause first. So Sarah, with your example, we could say she will get angry if we don't visit her. Or you won't recover quickly if you don't take your medication. Yeah. So if we do it the other way around, starting with the main clause, we don't need a comma in that sentence at all. Um, uh, Patri Patricia has said, when your baby is born, you'll be very busy. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's a good sentence. Yes. When when my baby is born. I will be very, very busy and very tired, I imagine. 
Okay, so that's the zero and the first conditional. Relatively easy, right? Relatively easy. Uh, just remember that the differences between them is zero conditional is absolutely guaranteed 100% every time you're going to get that result if whatever happens. With the first conditional, it'll probably happen, but it's not guaranteed and it might not happen every time. So remembering that zero conditional is also for general and first conditional is for specific situations. OK. Um, what else do I need to say? Oh, so, so in in that idea of comparing zero and first conditional, we could take the same sentence and give you the example differences. So. If you had the example of, if I drink a lot of alcohol, I fall asleep. So that, if I drink a lot of alcohol, I fall asleep. Because I haven't used the future tense in the main clause, this is zero conditional. And that means it happens every single time. If I drink a lot of alcohol, I fall asleep. Guaranteed every time in general. But I can change that to first conditional simply by adding the word will. And this slightly changes the meaning and means now at this particular point. If I drink a lot of alcohol now, I will fall asleep. Okay, so it's such a subtle difference, but it just changes, it changes the meaning <laughs> to mean this specific time. So Perhaps I'm really, really tired. I didn't get much sleep last night and you've given me a glass of champagne to celebrate something. Of course, I wouldn't drink now because I'm pregnant. But imagine if I was. I have one glass of champagne and then someone says, should we order a bottle of red wine? And I say, I'm so tired. If I, if I drink a lot of alcohol, I will fall asleep because I'm so tired. But normally, if I'm at a party and I'm full of energy and I've had a good night's sleep, having a couple of drinks would be great it would help me to have a good time and relax but this time on this occasion if I have a lot of a lot of alcohol I will fall asleep okay so that will just helps to change uh, the feel of the overall sentence um, Alina says I'm going to lose my job if I don't meet the deadline good good and you've switched around the clauses there and you didn't use a comma which is perfect if I don't watch Anna's YouTube videos with an S, if I don't watch Anna's YouTube videos regularly, then I'll not, where is it? Then I'll not learn British accent. Then I will not learn the, just add the in there. And that would be right. If I don't watch Anna's YouTube videos regularly, uh, then I will not learn the British accent. Uh, good. You can take away than, then, not than, then. Make sure you don't make that mistake um, and put a comma. So YouTube videos regularly, comma, I will not learn the British accent. Okay. Fantastic. Let's move on to, um, I'm sorry if I'm not reading out your comments. There's so many of them. OK, so let's go on to the second conditional. OK, so this is known as the I call it the future improbable con conditional. So this means it is something that's going to happen in the future and it probably won't happen. It's less likely to happen. So um, it's used for unrealistic. Um, hypothetical situations, hypothetical means you're talking about something if it did happen, but it probably won't happen. So like, what would you do if uh, you were given a chance to go to the moon? Um, what would you say if you had a chance to speak to the queen? What would you do if you met your idol? You know, it's this kind of, this kind of idea, a hypothetical situation. So you talk about what you would do but it's less likely. So let's talk about specifically the second conditional. Um, yeah, it's used to talk about future events that are unlikely to happen. The format is if, and then we're using the past simple, and in the main clause, we're using would plus the infinitive of the verb, okay? 
so, for example, let me give you an example here. If I won the lottery, so I'm using the past tense for win, won. If I won the lottery, I would build a school. If I won lottery, I would build a school. Let me give you this here. What would you do if you won the lottery? Um, now, the next example I'm going to give you here. If I were a rich man comes... Actually, that, that phrase reminds me of a musical. Does anyone know the musical that I'm thinking of? If I were a rich man... Do, 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 do. You get double points if you know the musical. Anyway, if I were a rich man, I would still be unhappy. Now, some of you might be wondering, why have I used were, not was? I was. Why would I say I were? That's odd. Well, were is often used instead of was in the first and third person singular when we're, when we're using conditionals, okay? Um, so let me just write what I've written here in the comments for you. So if we're doing a conditional sentence, then we'll often switch was for were in the first and third singular. Yeah, so I, w I always think of Beyonce. If I were a boy. Ha, da, 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 da. Yeah, if I were a boy. So she's using the second conditional talking about something that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's very unlikely that she's going to become a boy. She might. There is, there is the technology to turn Beyonce into a boy, but it's very unlikely to happen. Okay, so if I were a boy. Um, all right, so, so remember that you can switch was for were only in conditionals. Um, if he asked me to marry him, so I'm using past here. If, if he asked me to marry him, I would turn him down. I would turn him down. Um, Gerald, Geraldo says, if I met the queen, I would take picture with her. Don't you put any on the end that changes the word to here with her. I would take a picture. So use an article as well. I would take a picture with her. Fantastic. Um, if I had enough money, I would go to Britain to study. Fantastic. I'm very good. Perfect. If I got a magic power, I would go to Hogwarts. I'd say if, if I had. You can say if I got, meaning that you suddenly acquired it. If I got a magic power. But if I think probably had would be better. But got is okay. If I, if I had a magic power, I would go to Hogwarts. I use a comma as well because you're using the if clause first. So if I had a magic power, comma, I would go to Hogwarts. Um, uh, if I were a scientist, I would try my best to find a cure for COVID-19. So if I were a scientist, perfect, comma on the end. If I were a scientist, I would try, I would try. Okay, so I would, and then the infinitive of the verb, I would try my best to find a cure for COVID-19. If I had a rocket, I will go to space. Now here, you're getting confused, Sarah, with the, with the first conditional. I would is second conditional. I will is first conditional. Okay, um, it's a really important difference. The difference there as well between will and would is that will makes it feel more possible and would makes it seem highly unlikely and highly improbable. So would is used for unlikely situations. If I had a boat, I would travel all around the world, says Anna. Well done. Um, I would take a lot of pictures with you if we had a meeting. AK, really good, but you don't need a, you don't need a comma there because you've used the main clause first. So I would take a lot of pictures with you if, if, if we had, a, if we, I would take a lot of pictures with you 
if we had a meeting. You don't need once. Once doesn't fit very well there. If we had a meeting. Or if we ever had a meeting. Okay? If I had a chance, comma, I would fly to Mars. Fantastic. Okay, I think you guys have got it. Let me give you some more examples, though. I've got if he were, not if he was, if he were, if he were truly sorry, then he would make more of an effort. Um, if you were not a teacher, you would be a good therapist. Very good sentence. If I were a microbiologist, I would try my best to find a vaccine for COVID-19. Very good, Mary. Um, here's another one from me. If I had five children, I would start a five-a-side football team. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, someone asked about the musical that I mentioned. If I were a rich man is from Fiddler on the Roof. I didn't see the answer come through from anyone, but it's from the musical Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, here's another one from me. If I rode to work every day, thinking about a bike, if I rode to work every day, I would be fitter. It's highly unlikely, though, because I don't have a bike. <laughs> um, if I cooked your dinner, you would be blown away. Now here blown away by my skills here um blown away means amazed you'd be so amazed that it would <gasps> almost like make you gobsmacked it would just make you stand back in awe and excitement about how good i was at cooking now because i've used it in the second conditional it it sounds like it's never going to happen so imagine i started talking to a guy on the train and he's trying to chat me up um, and then I turn him down so he gets angry with me and he's like you're probably rubbish anyway I wouldn't want to hang out with you you probably can't cook and I would turn around to him and say if I cooked you dinner you would be blown away by my skills so I'm saying it in a sense that it's never going to happen but if it did then you'd be amazed at how good I was yeah does that make sense Okay, so the differences between the first and second conditional is that the first conditional is highly likely to happen, not guaranteed, but highly likely to happen, and the second conditional is not likely to happen. Yeah, it's quite an unrealistic um, hypothesis, hypothetical situation. Um, I'll give you some examples that are exactly the same, but using first and second conditional. If he apologises, she will forgive him. If he apologises, she will forgive him. That's in the first conditional. Um, so it's highly likely to... If he does apologise, then it's highly likely that she will forgive him. If we put that same sentence into a second conditional, if he apologised... Now I'm putting it in the past because it's not likely to happen. Even though I'm talking about a potential future... If he apologised, she would forgive him. It's never going to happen because he's not likely to apologise. But if he did, then she would possibly forgive him. So one gives it more probability than another, okay, about the actual thing happening. Not about the outcome, about the actual thing happening, yeah. Um, if I make it on time... I will be relieved. Um, if I made it on time, I would be relieved, but I'm not going to make it on time. Can you hear the difference? Hopefully. Um, okay, hopefully that's all clear for everybody. Let me know if, if you're still unclear. Um, the thing is with this stuff, like it's, it's, it feels confusing when you look at it all together. But it, again, with all these grammar rules, it's one of those things that you just, the more you use it, the more you get a sense for it. And then you don't even think about the type of grammatical structure you're using. It just feels right or it feels wrong. Um, 
So with, with all these things, when you're learning them, what's more important rather than worrying too much about, oh, is this zero conditional? Is this first conditional? The most important thing is just to practice the format, practice the scenarios, use that format over and over and over again until it feels second nature. Okay. So let me talk about now briefly the third conditional so the third conditional is talking about the past and it's talking about unrealistic situations again so um, i've written here it's used to talk about hypothetical situations in the past that did not happen and can never happen now because well we can't change the past can we but you might i do this all the time i talk about what would have happened if something had been different in the past um so the format for this, the formula for this, is a bit confusing. So let me give you this. It's if plus the past perfect, and then in the main clause, it's the perfect conditional, which is would have plus the um, past participle. Okay, so let me give you some examples to help with this one. Uh, if you had called me, if you had called me, you didn't, but if you had, I would have known. So if you'd have called me and told me, I would have known, but I didn't know because you didn't tell me. Okay, so if you had called me, I would have known. Um, and remember, we're always using would have, would have in the main clause. Um, if you hadn't turned up unexpectedly, there wouldn't have been any witnesses. If you if they hadn't if they hadn't turned up unexpectedly, there wouldn't have been any witnesses. Okay. Here's another example. If I hadn't been so busy, I would have spent more time with you. So it was nice to see you this weekend. If I hadn't been so busy, I would have spent more time with you. Okay. If I um if I hadn't been looking after Jacob this morning, I would have run this live lesson earlier today. But it didn't happen and I can't change it now. Um, Rohan said, if I'd had a bike, I would never have bought a car. I mean, there you've used had twice. You've used had contracted with I and you've used had again. If I'd, if, oh yeah, sorry, if I had had, if I had had, yes, yeah, sorry, of course you can use had had. It just looked a bit odd to me there for a second. If I had had a bike, I would never have bought a car. Sorry. Yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> um, what else have we got? If I have a home in the UK, then I will go to meet Anna Sis daily. Um, so, okay, so you're using a different um, setup there. If I, if I had, not if I have, if I had a home in the UK, then I would, probably a second conditional here because it's unlikely, unless you're planning to buy a house. If I, if I had a house in the UK, I will, if I have a house in the UK, I will go, yeah, you could do it, but it's unlikely. So we're going to use second conditional. If I had a home in the UK, and it's the UK, in the UK, then I would go to meet um, Anna daily. If I, Anna says, Anna Rita says, if I had eaten less, I wouldn't put on weight. If I had eaten less, I wouldn't have put on weight. Wouldn't have put on weight. Okay. Um, if you hadn't been angry, you would have understood me. If you hadn't been angry, you would have understood me. Perfect. If I had studied English every day, I would have been fluent by now, says Yoga Love. Good, really nice. Just be careful, capital letter at the beginning, full stop at the end. Um, had I studied well, oh, that's a nice little way of putting it. Had I studied well, similar to if I had studied well, had I studied well, I would have, don't miss out the have, would have, always, would have, would have, would have, I would have passed the exam. Okay. Uh, oh, so many examples here. Uh, 
oh gosh, if I had if I had a home in the US, I would have gone to a good university. Good. Just make sure if you're using the if clause first, you put a comma at the end of it. Okay, I think you guys are getting it. Let me just give you one more example here. I've written, if I had had, if I had had more time, you wouldn't have made any, if you had had more time, you wouldn't have made any mistakes. If you had had more time, you wouldn't have made any mistakes. Okay, um, loads of examples coming here. I'll just read a few more. If I hadn't broken my leg, I would go on holiday with you. If I hadn't broken my leg, I would go on holiday with you. So that's, that's second conditional. Yeah. Yeah. If I hadn't broken my leg, I would go on holiday with you. Yeah. If you had told me that you were in trouble, I would have helped. If you had told me you were in trouble, I would have helped. Very good. If I had not succeed, I would have to take the exam again. Succeeded. It succeeded. If I had not succeeded, I would have to take the exam again. Good. Um, Ram is asking about had had. Um, it's it's a lesson. It's a, it's a lesson on its own. Had had. I'm sure I have covered it before. Um, yeah, don't worry too much about that now. <laughs> I need to get my head straight before I try and teach that one again. It, it, it is it is confusing. Um, but yeah, that's a separate lesson to today. Uh, Mary says, if I had had more time to practice more English, I would have made less mistakes. Yeah, good. If I had a dinner with her, not a dinner, just dinner. You can have a meal, but you just have dinner. If I had dinner with her, I would definitely have, I would definitely have spent a lot of money. Good. All these sentences are good. Um, Um, I'm just trying to check something. Um, gosh, so many, so many comments here. Okay. Sorry guys, so many comments. I'm just trying to work out what some of them are. Um, okay. All right. Maybe this is a good time to wrap up. I'm kind of losing losing track of the comments that I haven't read. If I haven't read out your comment, I do apologise. Um, it's nothing personal. I have such a tiny screen here and all the comments are just whipping by very quickly. Um, after this is no longer live, once I stop this broadcast, feel free to write your examples or your questions in the comments below, the actual comments, not the live chat box. Um, and I will come back and have a look at those and help you out if I haven't managed to respond to you today. Um, do also, I know a lot of English teachers also uh, watch some of these videos. So if you're an English teacher and you see someone's comment and you feel that you can help them, then do feel free to do that. It, you know, we are a community. I can't always answer all of the comments. So let's help each other out if you feel that you have the knowledge to help someone. And then give them give them a helping hand. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I do have to go and get Jacob up from his nap, so I'm going to have to say goodbye. I hope that has kind of helped. I do have some videos specifically on each of these tenses that are coming up soon, so just stay tuned. Keep checking back for new videos, and um, and don't worry too much about about these conditionals. But hopefully that has helped a little bit today. All right. It's been lovely to see you. I'm going to say goodbye. Um, do give this video a big thumbs up. And uh, why not hang around and check out some more videos if you have a spare few minutes. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care.